Hello everyone, my name is Evan Hernandez, a software specialist at Shipdiver. Welcome to this tutorial series in which we will be looking at some um, use cases where a software and Shipdiver can team up to create amazing product configurators for you or your clients. In this first video, we'll be looking at a table. We'll create a simple table with traditional software components to end up with a final product uh, in a quick way. But then we'll be looking in, into some techniques to make our models compute faster. Let's get started. So first of all, we need to define the parameters of the inputs of our model and also the outputs of the display geometry and also the manufacturing files, for example, that need to be exported. Um, for that, we need a, a reference geometry, a reference product. Uh, for that, I have two references. I have this table and this other one. So as I said, this is just a traditional simple table. We don't want to focus on the design, but on the geometry itself. So for, of course, the basic parameters are the height, the width, and the length of our table. So we go over to our canvas. We can put that here. So I put minimum, minimum of one and maximum of 10,000. The reason why I make these um, values, this domain so big, so you can have a table of one or 10,000, is because we don't want to put um, product constraints here. We don't want to put any product logic in, in the definition. We want to do that in the website. Uh, so when we get to that point in a future video, you will see that in Shapediver, you will have these very open parameters, but actually in the website, you can, or your client can constrain those parameters. So this will be table width. Another reason we do that is because if in the future, if in the future uh, the client decides that they want to start uh, offering uh, a bigger table or a smaller table, and then you, you have defined your limits to, for example, below, from below that new maximum table that you're going to offer, then you will have to come back to your to your grasshopper and change your grasshopper. Whereas if you leave it open, you will not have to change your grasshopper. You just have to change the website itself, which is something that, that um, they can do through web developing. So it should be way easier than changing the grasshopper itself. So we have here the width, length, height. Uh, then we can also add the material thickness, for example. And then uh, we can also add the color radius. So for example, in this table, you can see here uh, in this part, uh, the detail of the corner is, is we want to be able to, to change that parameter as well. So we go with another one with corner radius. Uh, so the default values, everything here is going to be in millimeters. So you also want to keep your models organized, so try to always put some primitives in front of them, so you know the, the kind of data that you are actually inputting into the model. So if, for example, if I was going to a text, then I will add a text parameter here. I will also add um, the names here, table width. Number. So this is also the way we work here at Sheet Diver. We want to keep our models organized, easy to read. Uh, we don't want to have like too many cables going all over. We want everything to be organized and easy to read because we collaborate a lot with other with other parts of the team. So if, if we have to spend too much time just trying to figure out what the definition is doing, then that's a waste of time. So if you spend a little bit of time doing this kind of work of organizing your your definition, I think that will pay off later on. This is what I will actually grab and use in any group that I'm gonna start creating. Any groups where I'm gonna start creating the table. These are the base parameters, but then we want also some special parameters, some parameters that uh, include the, the profile uh, of the tabletop and also the profile of the leg, so how the leg looks. So for that, I have two references. I have this one where, I, they, where they show some popular wood and stone edge profiles, and I have also some references for the table leg profiles. So they will not be as detailed as they are shown here. There will be a little bit of a difference. 
but of course, uh, for the sake of, of the of keeping this simple, but of course we could go as as detailed as, as what is shown here. So if we go back to the definition, so here I imported the image of the profiles and I redo all the uh, profiles uh, with curves. So we can we have them here in the region. So I, all, I always like to work on the region. It keeps everything clean and predictable. So I, I didn't include it any of the of the part that actually belongs to the table, but just the edge, just the edge. And then I have also the names, so that if I go item, then I go base table profiles, and I go item, so I can take this one, and you can see how it changes while well, you choose another one, so if I choose convex or 45 degree chamfer, half convex, so all of them are there. Again, just the edge, no, nothing belonging to the table. The square one is the basic one, of course. And then also for my table leg profile. So this is the, uh, the file that you get from that website that I showed you. And then I just, again, took just the profile, nothing belonging to the top or the bottom, just the profile. And I imported uh, several one of the, several ones of them in our definition as well. So you can check them out here. Again, they are in the region. All of them are scaled to one. So basically all of them are one unit of height. Uh, again, everything is very predictable. It's in the region. So we know exactly uh, how many units we have to move it depending on the terrible like, thickness. And uh, also how much we have to scale it up depending on the table height. I also have all the names here for the leg profile, uh, but we'll, we will be looking into this a bit later. For now, I want to focus on the table top. First of all, I will take um, table width, table length, material thickness for the thickness of the table top, um, corner ridge. So I will take these parameters on one side. And I will start creating a rectangle. I want everything to be centered again, so I will construct a domain. But this domain will go from, in this case, for example, is 2000, so it will go from minus uh, 1000 to 2000. So I, I add a division of divided by, by 2, and this one I add a negative expression. So we have at the end. Uh, from minus 1000 to 1000. That goes to the length and to the width. I use the same principle. And then we have our rectangle. Yep, here it is. I can delete already it is. Okay, and then we have, of course, our corner radius. So we use it as well. And then that gives us uh, the boundary of our tabletop. Now we also, now we, not, we need to add this tabletop profile to our to our table boundary. Um, so to do so, first of all, I need to scale this table top. So I will scale it because I need it to be as big as our material of thickness. So I have the geometry, the center is zero because everything is in the region. And then we have the material thickness. Remember that here, if, if, if you haven't noticed, I start to preview off everything that I'm leaving behind because in, in shape diaper, Everything that is preview on will be shown. So you need to be careful and keep everything preview off so that just what you want to be previewed actually is shown and just, just you avoid any troubles in Shape Diver later. So we have to scale this up. So here you can see the uh, bigger. So that it is, it should be 28 units of height. And now we want to, well, as I said, we're going to start using some traditional grasshopper um, components. So we go to surface. Uh, we could, for example, use the sweep with one rail. So our rail will be our our boundary. This is our rail. Now we need to orient our um, profile so that it is in a perpendicular frame to our boundary. So we need it to be in a perpendicular frame to our boundary. We can evaluate our cure, evaluate our boundary in zero, so that means we are evaluating in, in the beginning of the curve, and then we need to construct a plane. This plane is going to have as a region D, 
the the origin of the curve of the boundary then we will have uh, as x vector of our plane will be actually the cross vector the cross product sorry of of the tangent of this curve with um with a set sorry with a set because we want we want our our plane to be perpendicular so it should be z will be our our, our uh, y in this case and our x will be uh, perpendicular to our curve tangent. So let me show you now here. So you will see it. And we need this to be z. So we can put it here, z. Yeah, here you can see it. You can see it better in the 3D view. It's perpendicular to our curve boundary. And there is where we want to uh, put our profile. So we go to orient. So this profile is of course in, in the x, y, so in the region. But we want to put it in this frame. And that one is the one that we are gonna sweep around this, uh, this uh, boundary. So you can see here the result. Now let's check because Let's check with other ones because we want to be sure that the orientation is correct. So square edge, uh, let's go with something like 45 chamfer. So yeah, the orientation is not quite correct. So probably we, do, we will need to use here Z. But this one probably has to be minus one so that it goes inwards, correct. So we have here our boundary and this goes inwards. We want it to go inwards as the orientation of the profile actually is. Let's check with another one to make sure that everything is correct. Yep, that's inwards, cotic, correct, 45 degrees. Yeah, everything seems correct. So that will be our tabletop edge, and then we just have to cap it. Holes, and that's all. That's our tabletop. Uh, then uh, we want to position this based on the table height. So we want to move it. We want to move it in z, in the z direction. And how much we want to move it? We want to move it on table height. Use that one. And now we're going to do something similar with the left profile. So first of all, uh, the reason why we, we have our profiles, so you can see the profiles, divided uh, in branches. For example, these ones have two branches and two branches. is because we want to apply different materials to the same leg. So in this case, if it, if it has two branches, that means it has two materials. That is to get uh, similar effects like this one, where you have uh, two woods, for example, or you have wood and acrylic or glass, and we want to achieve the same effect. Uh, so that's why we have it in different branches. So we can move this here to start our leg, and then the leg profile integer. Uh, so we want to put our tree. So that it gets all the branches, for example, in this case, all the branches that start with four. So we have, we can use the concanate to create our mask. That's called a mask. So our mask is like a, a, a tree path, but that is used as a reference. So in this case, will be, so that means it's going to take all the branches that uh, start with four. So four and the question mark means whatever number. So we have it there and this is what we have we want to take. So simplify it because we don't care anymore about the four in this case. We just care about what we graphed here, the profile that we graphed here. And then we're gonna take the material thickness and the table height. So the reason is because we want to scale our left profile but that scaling is uh, equal to the table height minus the thickness. So that will give us the, uh, the actual leg height. We scale then our leg. Then actually we are missing one parameter here, that is the leg thickness. Comes here, so. So let's just start with something like uh, 100. We have our profile here. This is where it's scaled up. It's a little big here. And uh, then we want to move our profile 
in the x direction half of the leg thickness because it's gonna it's gonna be um we're gonna use this component so uh, for that we just need a half of our leg to be moved like perform so x divided two uh, that we're gonna move it in x but actually we need to orient now our our profile so in the xz plane so we go orient it is in the x y and then we orient it in the x sorry in the xz path with origin that is half uh, half of the of the leg thickness actually it should, should be negative because in this case we want it to move to the negative side so we go to the perspective we consider and then finally we just have to um, evolve it so we use uh, our cure profile that would be this one then we can create a line that is going gonna, is gonna to be our axis we go line so this line starts in zero with direction z and the line doesn't matter really in this case we can internalize this one that's our axis and that's it the domain is 2p yeah that's correct because you want it to to do all the 360 degrees maybe that's a bit thick but let's see and then we can cap it again and we did with the tabletop that's it then we have this idea and then of course we have to uh, position our legs in the corners of our tabletop but first of all we need to create the apron or a skirt of the table that's this section this section here below the tabletop it's because our our um, legs are actually positioned in the corners of this apron not not on the corners of the tabletop so to create that we actually um, need some additional parameters so we will need the offset basically so the offsets are the offset from the tabletop edge to the apron in the ends and the offset from the tabletop edge to the apron in the in the sides Five offsets and uh, end offsets with this and also the apron um, height this can be actually another parameter we can just make it something um, are coded so with that we can create the apron so we also need the um, table length and table width the same divided by two that we have it here because we have to take the table length and take away actually the end offsets in the table length on a table width, we will take away the side offsets. Okay, so that will give us the rectangle, the same rectangle similar to what we have here. So I will take one of these ones as reference. And from there, I can create a rectangle. This is going to be the boundary of our apron. Now we also need the material thickness, so material thickness and also of course the apron height. So uh, the material thickness is going to be to offset the base boundary inwards. I'm going to offset this curve, material thickness because our tabletop and our apron are going to have the same material thickness. Um, so we see it here. This one has to be negative. Minus x, maybe inwards. Let's see. Yep. And then we merge these two rectangles. I like using a lot the merge component so that we also know the order that we are merging our data and also well that visually I can see where these kind of functions are added. In this case, our our offset component adds an additional um, depth to our branch, so I just flatten it so that it gives me just a single list. I can then use a boundary surface, and this is what I'm gonna extrude. 
much I'm gonna store it? Well, the A from height. In the Z direction, in the negative Z direction. And now we need to move this upwards to the tabletop, towards the tabletop. So we need the table, table height. But I need to do a rest here because I need to subtract, uh, subtraction, sorry. So I need to subtract uh, one material thickness out of this table height because of our apron is actually the table one table thickness below. No, it is below the tabletop. So let's move this in the Z direction. No, so we have now our apron. And then we need to position our legs in the corners of our apron. So to do so, I can use the rectangle, the boundary, the base boundary of our apron. I always, ex I always input information, data, in one side of the group and then output data in another side of the group. So this shouldn't come directly here. I don't, I prefer to don't do that. Again, to keep my data organized, to keep my script organized. So I will put here apron boundary rectangle. And I will extract information so that I know exactly what I'm taking out of this group. And I will actually move this group down so that we keep the hierarchy of what is being affected with what. So this group actually affects this group. It should come here. This group affects this group because I'm taking this information out of this group, this rectangle. And then from this rectangle, I can take these continuity points. So that will be the corners of my rectangle. And there is where I can move my legs. So let's see the final results. So we can preview on this one. And that's our table. We could change some parameters to see how it looks with other parameters. With this left type, with another left type. Oop, here there is a problem. Okay, when I move this, I need to graft my tree because there is several branches here. So I need to make sure that each item, each item in my branch is moved one time. So in this time, four times because it's four corners. So each item has to be moved. And that's it. We could uh, already upload this to Shipdiver and see how it looks. So if we go to um, app.shipdiver.com. If you don't have an account, you can create one, register is for free. You can also upload models for free and share it um, in, at Shipdiver. So you go to account, upload. Uh, here you can drop your file. So I have it already here. Uh, you can give it a name, table test. And then we can check this later on. Right now, we just want to see the result of our table in Shapediver. So our servers will process the model and give us the final rendering. So here we have it. Because we didn't add uh, custom textures that will come in other in other uh, tutorials. Then our table, of course, is a single plain color. You can change here uh, the background color so it contrasts to make contrasts with the table itself. So you can see our table. Um, of course, our parameters, all the names that we gave uh, to our parameters in Grasshopper are applied in Shipdiver. So if you go to tabletop profile, uh, we can change it to any other ones and see it reflected in the tree model. So let's go for, uh, for example, a multi convex profile so you can see there the difference and let's go for our leg so we can change the style style one for example or style three so yeah you can see there the difference so in the next tutorial we will be optimizing this table so it runs fast the all the components that we use right now were the ones that come traditionally in grasshopper but we will be using some c sharp and some uh, components that we use internally at Sheet Diver. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you learned something new, please don't forget to click on the like button down below. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down below so we can help you out. And if you don't want to miss out any new videos that come, then please subscribe. See you in the next one.